seated. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good, and uh, I know that there is a special message for each and every one of us. Uh, will bring us closer to the purpose of God and will cause the Lord to lift us from where we are to another place. Amen. Always remember, and I say this all the time, that us being before God is never by accident. Mm -hmm. It is purposed. Amen. If you woke up and you're here, it's because God wanted you to be here. Yes. Yes. If you are watching this, you're watching it because it was predestined. It was predestinated. It was the will of God before you knew who God was. He already decided that this was going to happen for you. Amen. We are going to learn something today that is going to be quite special. How to navigate into the destination that God has for you. YouTube, I want you to share this. Let somebody know that will let somebody know that will let somebody know that we are live. The Lord Jesus will be lifted. Share this, like this, share this as many times as you can. I want you to share this as many times as you can. Share this as many times as you can. And um, push the like button, subscribe, um, turn your notifications on. And the Lord Jesus, our God, will be glorified and he will be magnified because he's a good God. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we Hallelujah. refresh the YouTube for me, please? Thank you, Mom. Okay, let's, uh, let's keep hitting the like button. Let's keep sharing because this will be powerful. Now, whenever God has decided to give somebody direction, mm. how do you receive that direction? Mm -hmm. How do you know God wants you to go left and go right? Because the reality is many of us have not reached to the place where we can hear the voice of the Lord or perceive the voice of God audibly. Because God always speaks audibly. Amen. You not right. hearing audibly doesn't mean God did not speak audibly. Mm. That's good. You see, many times we pray, Father, I want to hear you clearly. I want to hear you louder. Mm. That is not a prayer request. It's a matter of developing your spiritual nature, wow. your inner man. Because his voice is like many waters. When he speaks, it's like lightning and thundering. It means God is extremely loud. Mm. But your perception of God is the issue. And the more you become sharp in hearing God, the more audible it becomes. Amen. I always use this example. Somebody who does hair notices everybody's hair. Oh, that was bad hair. That was good hair. Oh, that hair could have been done better. Who, who, who messed up your, your hairline, you know? They can see all that stuff. Why? Because they do hair so they can notice hair. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you walk in the spirit, you also notice what? So whatever you do is what is highlighted. You only see through your gift. You don't see through any ah. other thing. So once you understand that, it, become, it becomes easy for you to yield yourself to the side of, of how to hear God because if God is spirit, it means if I walk in the spirit, then it's easier for me to start perceiving Amen. God. Amen. And if I don't, then I miss God. Not because God is not audible. He's, you see, they are, I, when you're in fashion, right, and you like to dress up, there are clothes that are louder than others. Mm -hmm. right. that, that's just too loud. But there are people who pass and not notice that it was loud. They just say, that's cool. Mm. But they won't catch that it was so loud. It has to be extraordinarily <laughs> loud, loud for them to be like, oh, that's kind of too much. <laughs> But it can be loud whereby the colors are jumping and things, are, but they will never catch it. They will just be, that was a cool outfit. To them, it didn't say anything loud. So you, you are able to perceive according to, when people talk about discernment, they think discernment is common sense. Discernment is not common sense. Teach. Come on. It's crazy to me when they say, use your discernment. No, it's not something you use. It's something you see through. Ah. Mm. You don't decide when discernment turns on and off. And discernment is not a feeling. I just feel like something is wrong. That's called feelings. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's called emotions. That's not discernment. Right. To discern is to tell the difference between a clear distinction, Amen. not a blurry distinction. Amen. A clear distinction between this spirit and that spirit. That's why it's called discernment of spirits. Spirit. Yes. Meaning if I have discernment, 
I don't judge by my feelings. That's good. I, I, I hope that's You're making teaching. sense. If I have discernment, I don't judge or decide according to how I feel. Mm. That, that didn't feel right. So, <laughs> you know, many people who haven't met God, they don't know that God doesn't feel right. Come have on. you ever seen anyone in the scriptures meet an angel or meet God and say, wow, this was so beautiful? Everybody's almost having a heart attack. Yeah. It's more scary than seeing a demon. Yes. It's more frightening than seeing a devil, 100%. It's more frightening. An angel appears to <laughs> Daniel saying, I was like one that was dead, and he touched me and gave me strength. When you saw God, you, you see God, you want to die. You want the earth to, you want to be swallowed. Take me somewhere. I don't want to be here. It's not, it's not an easy thing. Ask my uncle, uh, Earthquake, Qu Kelly will tell you. It's not an easy thing to see angelic beings or to see God. It's actually easier to see demons. Way easy. You see them, they just look like creatures. Some of them like monkeys, gorillas. Some also look like men. But you feel a negative, a dark kind of thing. But you can resist. It doesn't make you pass out. The presence of God, you, you feel like all the strength out of your knees is gone. Ah. <laughs> it's not an easy thing. You know, I remember, I always remember this encounter. Uh, and I was taken to heaven. And uh, I was at a garden, and I always remember how the chairs were set. They were always set like in a circular kind of... Have you ever been to um, the Hollywood Bowl? You know how the seating is kind of like this. Yeah. But these were garden chairs. They were just set up like this, and there was a pulpit in the center. And one of the prophets was speaking, and I don't know why I was privileged to be in that meeting. And I sat, I was listening, listen, the most comfortable garden chairs, better than any couch you have ever sat on. <laughs> and I was sitting there wondering, why am I in this place? And I saw the Lord. When the Lord Jesus is walking, it's like he's everywhere at the same time in heaven. It's like if you see him over there, you turn this way, you see him over there, you turn mm. this. Everywhere you look, you will see him. It's a very strange thing. It's like he's everywhere. Not like he's actually everywhere. Amen. And everything is so in sync. Anyone you think of is actually coming to you. It's like every, everything is so synchronized. There's no disorder, even in the thoughts or everything. I remember looking back and I saw him like he was over there. And then I looked again. He was so close to where the pulpit was. And everyone without even looking, they all came off their chairs and they bowed down. And the one who was speaking, I won't tell you who it is. I think I've told you before, but I won't get into that. He, without even looking behind, he said, the master is here and everybody threw themselves down. And he said, children, sit, 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 sit. And he told him to continue speaking, and he came. I was wondering where I was sitting, why there was an open chair. And he came down, and he told me a lot of things about my work on earth and things like that, and then I was sent back. But what I'm trying to explain to you in short is that there is a reverence beyond your recognition that will put you on your knees whether you like it or not. Amen. Amen. It's not optional. When people say, if you meet an angel, you ask him, are you from God or from... I'm like, you haven't met an angel. <laughs> you think you're going to question an angel like that. You will know... Be, that day your discernment will work whether it never works or... <laughs> <laughs> that day discernment will work by fire, by force. <laughs> Without any choice. But I want us to go to Isaiah chapter 30. Uh, you can read for us, Bishop. It's, Which version do you usually have? King James? I have or King James, King? and then I have... Uh, New Living. No, the Amplified. You like... Okay, I'll let you read your Amplified today. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 30 from verse 19 to 21. Isaiah. Actually, to 22. Isaiah 30 from 19... To 22. O people who dwell in Zion at Jerusalem, mm -hmm. you will weep no more. Mm -hmm. It will surely be gracious to you at the sound of your cry. Mm -hmm. When he hears it, he will answer you. Mm -hmm. And though the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, mm -hmm. yet your teacher will not hide himself anymore. Mm -hmm. But your eyes constantly behold your teacher. Mm -hmm. And your ears will hear a word behind you, mm -hmm. saying, 
this is the way, walk in it. Mm -hmm. When you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left, mm -hmm. then you will be overlaid with silver and your molten images plated with gold. You will cast them away as a filthy blood-stained cloth mm -hmm. and you will say to them, be gone. Uh -huh, right there. I want you to read it one more. Mm -hmm. From 19. Mm -hmm. O people who dwell in Zion at Jerusalem, mm -hmm. you will weep no more. Mm -hmm. He will surely be gracious to you at the sound of your cry. Mm -hmm. When he hears it, he will answer you. Mm -hmm. And though the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teacher will not hide himself anymore, mm -hmm. but your eyes will constantly behold your teacher, mm -hmm. and your ears will hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. When you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. Stop right there, Apostle. Amen. Now hear me by the Spirit of God, and I want this to sink into you. The closer you are to God, mm -hmm. the more God will give you the bread of affliction. Whenever God loves you, it pleases him to afflict you. Not because God doesn't love you, but there is a place that God is trying to get you to. That without the bread of affliction and the waters of affliction, without you going to affliction, you don't mature to the place where you can hear a voice. Mm. The reason you don't hear a voice behind you, the reason why you cannot perceive the voice of God is not because your spiritual eyes have not been opened, your spiritual ears have not been opened. You are rejecting the process that gets you to the place you begin to hear and you begin to see. No one can deny their idols unless you have gone through the process of affliction. You hear the voice, then you will realize that your idols mean nothing. Gold will mean nothing to you. Silver will mean nothing to you. But these things will continue to matter to you until you decide to eat and drink from the cup and the bread of affliction. That is why fasting is beneficial. You know why? Mm. You're afflicting yourself. Mm. I don't know if somebody's hearing me. Whenever you choose to afflict yourself, not punish yourself, but afflict yourself according to scripture, is yielding yourself to the process of being molded. When you surrender yourself in the hands of God, the molding is not pleasing. Because you giving yourself to him, it means that he has the freedom to do with you what he wants. Many of us will say, Lord, do with me what you will. But in reality, we are saying, Lord, give me what I want. Mm. Mm. Not God, do with me what you please. The reality is, the Lord Jesus, do with me what you want. Your cry becomes authentic. When you realize that your cry equals affliction. He doesn't begin to hear you after affliction. He hears you when you cry. He will answer you, but the answer won't be to increase you immediately. The answer will be to put you through the bread of affliction. And then after the bread of affliction, then you will hear his voice telling you, go left and right. And from then, your teacher will not depart. God departs from you because he has not molded you to be with him. Mm. Let me talk to somebody that wants to hear. In order for God to remain with you, you have to be broken like bread. You have to be afflicted. And when you have survived affliction, because your affliction is your shaping, mm -hmm. your affliction is your molding, mm -hmm. Your affliction is your preparation. Most of your affliction is not demons. The problem is the church has glorified the devil too much. Everything is devil, everything is devil, everything is devil, everything is Satan, everything. It's like a song, devil this, devil that, devil this, devil. 
Because you don't understand that the reason why you haven't been dying is because the one who is afflicting you is not afflicting you unto death. He's afflicting you unto life. Yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. But, but the idea, but the idea and the modern concept of being a believer is to be soft. Everything just has to work. Everything has to be good. If you ever met anyone that is seasoned in God, you will see them doing well, but if you look at the affliction in their life, you will understand why they're doing well. Yeah. <laughs> Many think of it like, oh yeah, they just appeared and they were a nice person and God blessed them. That can happen too. Yeah. But you have to remember our greatness in God is not measured by the wealth we possess. Yes. It's measured by how many lives we can impact consistently. Amen. How many lives can you help? How many people can you bring to Christ? How many people can be delivered? How many people can be healed? How, how, how... How has God shaped you that if you touch somebody, they have a devil, even if your uh, eyes were not open, they will be free. Yeah. If you bless somebody, indeed they will be blessed. Whatever you do, the side effects are so huge. Yes. There's such a huge consequence to touching you or you touching them. And this consequence is actually positive. It's a positive reinforcement of what God is doing. What do you think gets you to that place? Mm. Jesus received the Holy Spirit. Mm. The first leading was to be afflicted. When he left the affliction, he became powerful. Mm. Then he was being told, now he no longer was led. He was being told, go here, go here. I must do what my father says. Before that, he didn't know that. Mm. Mm. There was no, I must do what my father says until after affliction. Abraham received the, pros the promise after affliction. Yes, yes, yes. Your cry hasn't been real to God. And the cry doesn't mean tears. It's talking about genuine prayer. Yes. Nothing is pure unless it goes through the fire. That's good. That's good. Nothing is pure until it goes through what? The, the fire. fire. When things go through the fire, then we know what you really are. You know, sometimes people say death is the fire. No, people mm. always die. Whether you are Christian or not, somebody has lost somebody. Yeah, That's not the fire. The fire is a test of your faith. Mm -hmm. The fire is not who offended you. The fire is not who insulted you. The fire is not who resisted you. The fire is not who went against you. The fire is your test in God. When things are good, is he still God? Mm. When things are bad, is he still Lord? Mm. Mm. When things turn against you, when you have been delivered into the enemy's hands, mm. is he still your savior? Mm. That is the real fire. Wow. When your husband walks away from you, when your wife walks away from you, when the whole world spits against you yes. because you have chosen Christ, Amen. that is the real fire. Not the fire of, oh, I'm just left. You can find somebody else. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Let me tell you something. Now, I want to show you something. This is quick. Apostle, can you find this for me? Uh, it just came into my spirit. Uh, thank you, Lord Jesus. This one will be sweet. Um, Second Timothy chapter 20. No, Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 to 22. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. Uh -huh, to 22. Mm -hmm. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver. Listen to this. In a great house. Remember, what we were reading in Isaiah says, the citizens of Mount Zion... That means God's house. Mm -hmm. Mount Zion is the mountain of God. That means God's house. Amen. That's where God dwells. Mm -hmm. So in the book of Timothy, we are being told what is in that house. Read it again, Apostle. But in a great house, there are not only silvers of gold 
not only vessels of gold and silver, mm -hmm. but also utensils of wood and earthenware, mm -hmm. and some for honorable and noble use, mm -hmm. and some for menial and ignoble. Ignoble. Are you reading King James or Amplified? Amplified. You want please, me to read please. King James? Let's have you. <laughs> See, I thought Amplified is easier to read. <laughs> hey. hey, hallelujah. <laughs> Apostle, you are African too. I didn't know. <laughs> I'm trying, Papa. I okay. think this one. Who else has King a microphone? King James. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver but also of wood and of uh, earth, mm -hmm. and some to honor and some to dishonor. Mm -hmm. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. Stop right there. Listen to what the Bible is saying. In a great house, they are not only vessels of gold. They are not only vessels of silver. There's vessels of wood, and there's vessels of earth, meaning clay. And some of these are only used for special occasions yes. where honor is due. And some of these are used in a place of dishonor. Hey. There are vessels unto honor and there are vessels unto dishonor. But if a man purges himself, then he can become a vessel of what? Honor. Honor. Meaning that your use in the hands of God is dependent on how much you get or, or you permit God to purge you. Mm. Wow. It's not dependent on God, it's dependent on you. Wow. Amen. Let me give you an example. A vessel of wood, this is somebody that has refused to go through affliction. Because if you put wood in the fire, it's gone. Okay, let, let, let's change the subject. No, no, no. I wish somebody could hear this. If you are a vessel of wood, you cannot survive the fire. It burns. If, some, if you are put in the fire, you will burn. Mm. And that means you will be destroyed. You will be of no use. So the best place God can use you is a place of dishonor. A place where there is no glory. A place where there will be no testimony. I went through the fire and the Lord was with me. I went through this trouble and the Lord saved me. If you're a vessel of wood, you cannot. Let me talk to the people online. Let me talk to the online people. Now you see some of these translations, I don't like them because they'll say, if you stay away from sin, it's not staying away from sin. Mm. It's a completely different meaning. To purge, you cannot purge yourself. To purge means to cleanse. Doesn't mean to abstain. That's, good. That's why we say what can purge our sin. Not just wash, wash us, wash but to purge, purge means to take, take away out. the memory of it ever being there. That's why you have to be careful with translations because even though it's trying to give you the same meaning, it's not. It's really not. You, because words have meaning. Yeah. Because the Bible did not make a mistake. The writers did not make a mistake to write it in the way they wrote it. Yeah. That's why it's important to know words. Amen. Abstaining from sin doesn't make you a vessel of honor, even though it's commandable. It's a good thing to stay away from sin. But that's not what makes you a vessel of honor. If you're a vessel of wood, you will not survive fire. When difficult times come, when God wants to use you for something great and he puts you in the fire, you will run because you know the fire will make you quit. You would rather save yourself than go into the fire because if you go into the fire, you know you will forsake the God that you love. The vessel of the earth is a good vessel. It's not a bad vessel. It's not the best vessel. It's in the okay category. Why? Because the, the earthen vessel 
is easy to break. And often time, when it is shaped over time, it can change its form. It shifts sometimes. And because of that nature, in order for God to reshape it, he has to break it again, smash it, and rebuild it. The problem with earthen vessels is you are stuck in your ways. It's not easy for you to be reshaped. When the Lord was talking to Jeremiah, he said, Jeremiah, go to the porter's house. Jeremiah got to the porter's house and he saw the maker or the porter was shaping things and sometimes they didn't turn out the way he wanted them to be. So he broke them into pieces and redid it again. He said, Israel, I'm in my hands like the clay. Why can't they let me shape them? When you are an earthen vessel, when you are an earthen vessel, these are people who are stuck in their ways. They are not people who change by fire because if you take that vessel and put it in the fire, it becomes harder. You put it in the furnace. That doesn't make it shapeable. It actually makes it more resistant. I, I don't know if somebody's understanding because to purge, to purge and remember the fire comes to test. It comes to test and to purge. But if you're an earthen vessel, fire makes you harder. It makes you stick to your ways even more. Wow. I have seen believers being on a Titanic, a shipping sink, uh, a sinking ship. Jesus, I'm African. <laughs> a sinking ship. And they will continue to play their violins until they drown. Because what they are used to, they are not willing to be changed. Because my father did this. My mother did this. Because this is what I know. Everything else that is being taught, it, it's not, it does not align with what I used to hear. So I, I am not into it. That, you know what that is? Of, you, are, you are an earthen vessel. You are not fit for any use of honor. Because for you when you come, for you when you come, you desire to enforce people in your own traditions, in your own ways, what you are used to. Not what God is saying, what you are used to. You don't need prophecy. You just need the word of God. You don't need healing. You're going to heaven after all. You don't need money. Money is mammon. But yet they work a nine to five to get money to pay for their bills. You don't need nice clothes. You don't need this, but you notice the people who say this are people who can't afford it. So because they have not been able to afford it, because they have not been able to live a certain life, for them, everyone that has that is evil. Everyone that has that is evil. It has, it has cemented them in lack. It has cemented them in stubbornness. It has, it's like they're enforced into it. The fire doesn't make them better. It hardens them. It hardens them. And the longer they stay there, they become black, dark. <laughs> Meaning their condition worsens. Not only do they become hard, but the color of their heart also changes. Wood will burn. It's still useful in the kitchen. You have, when you, when your uh, uh, special guests come, you don't give them a wooden spoon. 
And the plates you will use, like me, I'm African. In my house, everyone knows you don't give me food in plastic. Mm. I'm they sorry, Daddy. I, I don't, huh? <laughs> Disposables, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> we don't do that. That's just our culture, is it not? Yes, it is. That, that's just us. Daddy, thank you for supporting me. <laughs> because the eyes, the way they were looking at me like, what? <laughs> I, I can't eat on, I, I don't, I didn't, I wasn't raised like that. That's why you have fine china for special That's occasions. Right. Yeah, That's right. You have certain things that come, they have to be, when you have guests, there's a way. Many of you have vessels of stainless steel, right, that you serve with people, but if it's a proper place, every uh, um, every utensil will either be pure silver or yes, gold. Or gold, yeah. yeah. That's right. But I will explain to you why in a second. We are getting there. Athen vessels are fleshly people trying to be spiritual. <laughs> Wherever they go, they resist everybody. Unless you can fit into them. Because they are bold. <laughs> Unless you can fit into them, they can never mold to you. You have to mold to them. Wow. So they are not useful for anything except that which can fit into them. Mm. Everything that is outside of them, they are not into it. Mm. These are carnal men trying to be what? Spiritual. Spiritual. Are you learning something? Yes. If you're learning something, wave your hand. I want to make sure you're learning something. Is this making sense? Yes. Because the reality is, if you don't adapt this truth, if you don't know this truth, if this truth doesn't enter you, I'm sorry. Mm. You have such a hard time with things that you should not be having a hard time with. You can't keep going to the same place that has been giving you bad results for years and expect a different result. Mm. It's called insanity. That's right. It's 100% insanity. Mm -hmm. The word you hear doesn't make you grow. It doesn't make you mature. But because you are faithful to earthen vessels, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Come on now. now the vessel of silver is a sanctified person, is a sanctified person, but it's an instrument of common use. Mm. Not for special use, common use. Mm. <laughs> Remember, these two are of dishonor, yeah. wood and earth. earth. These ones are, you, mm. it's like for... disposables. Silver you don't throw away because it's valuable. But silver is for common use. That is why your money was, um, was uh, silver. Silver yeah, coins here and here. Everything was, you trade, everything uh, was silver uh, mostly. Uh. Gold was the star. If you have gold, you're on another class. But silver, Jesus was sold for 30 pieces of what? Silver. Silver is what people use for, for money because it can take a lot of damage. Yeah, and it's still okay. You know, many don't realize that gold is actually soft. Very soft. Gold is not hard. Yes. The purer the gold, the softer it is. Mm. Correct. Yes, you actually... You actually <laughs> but we are coming to, to that. Add, huh? yes, you actually have to add silver to make yeah, gold solid. That, that's, that's why I'm... Apostle, you're still in my... <laughs> hear me, hear me by the Spirit of God. Silver is much is much durable. It is very durable, mm, mm. but it is not for special occasions. Mm, it's for yes. common use. It's for common use. It's for common use. It can be beaten, it can be thrown away, it can be put in the fire, it can be... It's yeah, very yeah. durable. It can survive anything. But the issue is, because it is common, mm. Who you will, how you will represent God 
will not be different from another person somewhere. You will not be highlighted because you will be the standard. Who you are with brother so, with sister so, with the cousin so, whoever it is, you'll be at the same level. You will all be of common what? Use. Meaning through you, you are generating people who say, wow, so and so is anointed. So and so is anointed. But if a gold vessel comes through, everybody will turn to the gold vessel. Yes. The issue with the vessels of silver is because you have taken so much beating, mm. because you have been there for a long time and you have been faithful because you can take it. It's easy for you to be offended mm. because it should have been you and not this soft person that came out of nowhere. <laughs> 